Hello, my name is Alex Kemeny and I work at Trump's Bridge Centre teaching uh, duplicate bridge, running duplicate bridge and supervising sessions. I work for Derek Brown down there. Trump's Bridge Centre is in Sydney, Australia in the suburb of Mossman. So if you're ever in town on the north side of the Harbour Bridge, please do drop in. During the supervised sessions I run, the students and people who come to the session uh, often ask me about bridge scoring. So uh, it's quite tricky bridge scoring, particularly what we call match point of pairs, which is what we play in bridge clubs when we play what's called duplicate. So I did want to explain how this form of scoring worked. And I think if you haven't watched my first video about rubber bridge scoring, it will be useful to watch that. It's part one of this two-part uh, um, series that I'm putting together about bridge scoring in general. Because if you watch the first video, you'll understand uh, the history of some of the concepts. So what I've done up here on the board is I have put nine scores up. I have assumed that we are playing a nine table duplicate and therefore each board is played nine times. So let's assume this is board number eight possibly. It's a board where no one's vulnerable, which is important in the scoring I'll explain later. So what the director sees, or the computer these days, but in the old days the director sees on the score sheet when the scores come in, the board has been played nine times. It was played firstly at table nine by north-south pair nine versus east-west pair nine. And there was a certain score recorder, which we'll get to in a minute. And then in the second round, the board went down to table eight. It was played by north-south pair eight, opposite east-west pair seven. And so on across all the rounds. So in the final round, the board made it all the way down to table one, where it was played by pair number one for north-south, versus pair number two for east-west. So this is a score on one board when it was played nine different times. So what I have here is north-south pair number, east-west pair number, what the contract was, who the declarer was, contract, three spades, by north, the number of tricks that were made by declarer, here nine tricks, so declarer fulfilled his contract of three spades exactly, and the score on the board. Now, I've expressed the score always in terms of what north-south scored. So, obviously, if north-south scored plus 140, then, in effect, east-west have scored minus 140. Out here, we'll actually score up the board because we need to figure out, well, we've got all these scores, a confusing array of nine scores. How do we decide who has performed best on this board? One thing I should mention is that is duplicate scoring is done by ranking the boards. So it doesn't matter how much you win a board by, or if you have the best score on the board, because the scores are ranked, and then we just assign a rating to each ranking, and you'll see how that works in a moment. What the contract is and all that is, is very interesting for the players at the table, but really the only thing that matters when it comes to scoring, of course, is the final score that was made. So, these days the computer did it, but in the old days the director would do it, and the director would look down the scores and say, well, the best score for north-south on this board was this score here, where north-south 3 played east-west 6. So here, north-south have come first. I'll give them position number 1. My pen is playing up, unfortunately. So I'm going to write a 1 there. North-south have come first. Now, the next best score here is these two scores of 140. So, these two tables, north-south, have come equal second. And here, equal second. What's the next best score? Well, the next best score is this score here, 120. Two no trumps was played by South, making eight tricks, 120. So this is the fourth rank score. This is second equal, second equal, so we don't have a third. We have to move to fourth. Fourth is this score here. That's the fourth best score for North-South. Then the next best score is this one here. That's the fifth best score of plus 100. No, that's wrong. 
the fifth best score is here. This is the sixth best score. It's a funny looking six. Now they're the only scores where North South have made a positive score. Here a funny thing has happened, the board has been passed in, so no one has scored anything. But it still gets ranked. Very important, it still gets ranked. So this is actually the seventh best score for North South. And now we move into the realms where North South has managed to score a minus score on this particular hand. This hand looks like it's a North South hand, but in a couple of cases North South have actually managed to give points away on the board. Here it would seem they just stretched a little bit too hard north-south, they bid all the way up to four spades, they were only able to, to gain nine tricks when south was declarer in four spades, so they gave away 50. It's not vulnerable, this board I mentioned. So 50 points is one off, not vulnerable, undoubled. So that therefore becomes the eighth best score on the hand. And the worst score for north-south was where they actually let east-west make a contract. So here, they didn't bid on where they might have, and more than that, they've actually let East West, East here, make nine tricks. So East has scored plus 110, which means North South score minus 110. So that's the ninth best score. So I've now ranked the scores. So three spades, making nine tricks is 140. Because if you watch my first video where I explain how bridge scoring works, if we make a contract in hearts or spades, we get 30 points for each uh, level we make. So we've made three spades, that's 90. We get another 50 points bonus. As I explained in the previous video, if you uh, are successful in making a part score in a rubber and the rubber ends, you get 50 points added. So that's why in duplicate bridge, we always add 50 points for making a part score. So that's where the 150 comes from. Here I mentioned that four spades was one off. 50 away. Here, three clubs, it was bid by East and he made his nine tricks, so he did very well. And East West has scored 110. Here, three clubs was doubled. East West also bid to three clubs here. They were doubled, and here the contract did fail by one trick. So the score, therefore, one off, doubled, not vulnerable, you give 100 points away. So there, East has given away 100 points. But you'll see when I talk further that just giving away points doesn't necessarily mean that you've done badly on the board. And in fact, as we'll see, this board was actually quite a good board for East West, even though they went off. Here again, three spades has scored nine tricks for 140. Here, a strange thing happened. The board was passed in, meaning it went pass, 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 and the fourth person also decided to pass. Now, who knows why that happened? No one decided to open on that hand. Perhaps someone, no one judged their hand was worth it. I've also seen cases where players have just missed an ace in their hand. So someone's sitting there with 15 points and they thought they only had 11 or something like that, so they didn't open. So that hand was passed in. The board is still scored. That's very important because it's still scored as zero points scored by North South, zero points scored by East West. It doesn't mean it's an average board, as you'll see. Here, north-south stretched all the way. No one else much than one other bid to four spades. Here, they bid to four spades. However, they made it. So they get the game bonus that I spoke about in the other video. Four spades, four times 30 is 120. You then add 300 for making a not vulnerable game. As I mentioned in the previous video, not vulnerable game in an unfinished rubber, you add 300. So that's where a score of 420 comes from. By the way, if this was a hand where north-south was vulnerable, then the score would be 620. Because if you're vulnerable and you make a game, you've actually finished the rubber, and that's when you get your 500 point bonus. So it would be 620. But notice that here it wouldn't actually make a difference. They've come first on the board anyway. So whether they've scored 620 or 420 doesn't matter in this form of scoring where we are ranking the scores. I also want to mention that if you hear of a tournament being run as Swiss pairs or butler pairs, this type of scoring does not apply. Swiss pairs and butler pairs are more like rubber bridge scoring where it's the number of points you score that really matters. However, in this, doc this discussion we're talking about match pointed pairs, which is what you usually play when you go to a bridge club and play a session of duplicate bridge. 
Here, it was a bit unusual, they found a contract of two no trumps north-south, but nevertheless, they did make it, and they scored, therefore, 40 for making one no trump, 30 points for each additional no trump, that gets you up to 70, another 50 points for making a part score, that's where the 120 points comes from. And finally, when the ball was played for the last time in round nine, two spades was bid by north-south, and they made just eight tricks, 110, two times 60, plus 50. So that's just explaining how the board scores were calculated at the table. As I mentioned before, what's much more important is the ranking. So once the boards have been, the, the scores have been ranked, we then score up how many, uh, how, who's done the best. And the way the scoring works is you get a number of match points. So on each board, You've got the pot here when we're playing a nine board round, there are nine tables. We've got the possibility if we win the board better than anyone else, as this pair has done, we've beaten eight pairs. We beat all the other eight pairs that played the board. In match point of scoring, you get two match points for every pair you beat. So this pair here has beaten all the north-south bits, have beaten all the other east, all the other north-south pairs, so they score 16 match points out of 16 on this board. That pair has got 100% on the board. That is the north-south pair. Now, of course, bridge is a zero-sum game, so if north-south have scored 100%, 16 match points out of 16, think of it from east-west point of view. They gave away 420 points. Nobody else gave away as much as 420 points. So east-west on this board score zero match points. So for each pair you beat, you score two match points. So now let's go to the second pair. Well, this pair here has beaten one, two, three, four, five, six other pairs, and they have tied with this pair. So by tying with a pair, you get one match point. By beating a pair, you get two match points. So they beat six pairs, and they tied with one. So here, they get 13 match points. This is north-south at this table. Bridge is a zero-sum game. So East-West get three match points because East-West here have beaten nobody except for this pair. They beat that pair and they tied with that pair. All the other East-West got better scores than this East-West here. So that's why East-West only get three match points. Same applies up here. This is the same score. Right. These two guys were tied. So here we have 13 match points to these north-south pairs and three match points to this east-west pair. What's the next one? Well, the next one is the people who came fourth here, the north-south pair. So they have beaten one, two, three, four, five. They have beaten five other pairs, therefore they score 10 match points. Looking at the east-west here, they have beat, they, they gave away 120 points. Well, they beat this pair that gave away 420, they beat this pair that gave away 140, and they gave, beat this pair that gave away 140, so they score six match points. They beat three pairs. So obviously you can see the match points always add up to the same. So we can now look at this pair here, north-south. They have beaten one, two, three, four. So they score eight match points. Pen is really giving out now. I'm sorry, I should have taken another pen. Never mind. Eight match points here. And we know that the match points always up to 16, so eight match points there. We now move to this pair. They have beaten one, two, three. Therefore, they score six match points. And over here, therefore they must get 10 because that always adds up to 16. It's getting easy now. This pair here, the seventh pair, the pair that came seventh, they've beaten one, two, so they get four match points. East West are now doing pretty well. So this East West pair, notice the ball was passed in. Zero points were scored, and yet East West scored 12 match points out of 16. Why is that? Because most of the scores were plus scores for North-South. So North-South scoring zero here where the ball was passed in really wasn't very clever of North-South. They probably should have bid and made some contract as most other people did. So 
passing the board in, the board is still scored. And in fact, you can actually get a top. Let's suppose all the scores were for north, south as plus, then this will be a top for east, west. As it is, there are a couple of other cases where north, south gave away points. So it's not a top for east, west, but as you can see, east, west are doing better on this board than all of these ones here. Because on all of those ones there, east, west gave away points. Now we're getting down to the last couple. This particular person here for north-south, this pair here, they only beat one other pair. They scored minus 50, and the only ones they beat were these ones, who scored minus 110. So they get um, two match points for beating one pair, and now we're up to 14 here. And this pair, pair seven, they got the worst score because they allowed East West to make a contract. So they scored zero match points and 16 here. So, here we have the match points for board number 8. All you do for a session of bridge is you add up all the match points that everyone scored. So, if for instance we had 25 boards in the session, each board has 16 match points available. So, across the whole session of 25 boards, you'd have 25 times 16, which is 400 available match points. So, you add up all the match points, so let's say pair 5 has scored, Towards 13 match points here, you add up all the match points they score. If they score, let's say, two, exactly 200 match points out of the 400 available, well then they have a score of 50%. If they, let's say, scored, let's say, scored 220 match points out of the available 400 in the session, 220 as a proportion of 400 is 55%. Obviously, average is 50 if a top, one pair gets a top, the other pair gets a bottom. The match points always add up to the same number, 16 in the case of a nine board uh, session, where we, each, each board has been played nine times, I mean a nine round a session. So as I mentioned, 220 match points out of 400 gives us a score of 55%. Now I did want to discuss how vulnerability could affect the scores. Let's say this was a vulnerable board. Well. Bidding and making a vulnerable game, you don't get a 300 point bonus, you get a 500 point bonus. So this score would become 620. Part scores are unaffected by vulnerability. You still just get 50 points for your part score. So this score is unaffected, this score is unaffected, the passed in board unaffected, unaffected. Here, three clubs doubled, went one off. Well, not vulnerable, one off, doubled is 100, but vulnerable, it's 200. So the score here for north-south, that the board was vulnerable, becomes 200, which is quite interesting, and we'll see how that affects the match points in a moment. Part score board, no effect on the score. Here we're one off, undoubled, 50, not vulnerable, one off, vulnerable, undoubled, 100. Part score unaffected. All right, this person is still coming first. The fact they got 620 or 420 didn't actually make a difference to the ranking. So they have still come, north-south have still come first, their ranking is unaffected. Now notice that the second best score now is the 200 points. While three clubs, one off, doubled, not vulnerable, was quite a good result for East, by East going one off, vulnerable double and giving away 200 points, that's a lot of points to give away when most other people are not making gain. So in fact, the north-south position has now leapfrogged way up. You'll notice this is now the second best score. Let me rub out all the rest. The second best score for north-south. So if it's the second best score, North-South are not scoring six match points. They've beaten seven pairs. It's the second best score. They've beaten all the other pairs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Therefore, North-South scores 14 match points. And East-West plummet down to two. The minus 50 or minus 100 actually didn't make any difference. They were still the second worst score. So the other scores will will change about because this is now the second best score, therefore uh, these become the equal third best. Let me rub out all these wrong match points. OK, 
okay. The 120 is now the fourth best score. The fifth best score is this one here for North South. Uh, oh, mistake, sorry. Equal third means that this one didn't come fourth, they came fifth. Equal third means there's no fourth, therefore they came fifth. They came sixth. Pen's giving out, unfortunately. Always does that when I do these videos. Seventh, eighth, and ninth. In fact, these were eighth and ninth and four. We could rematch point it. But I just wanted to point out how vulnerability can be quite important, especially when you get doubled and go off. The difference between 100 and 200 can be quite significant. Notice also that's the other thing about this method of scoring. 10 points makes quite a different bit of difference in the ranking, or 20 points. Whereas if we're playing rubber bridge, we're not really worried too much about 10 points and 20 points. So this does affect the tactics of duplicate bridge. And I may do another YouTube video about tactics in uh, duplicate bridge based on these scoring uh, things I've explained in this video. So I hope this video has been instructive. And as I mentioned before, this actually is part two. I did a part one video which talked about rubber bridge scoring. So I hope you've enjoyed watching the videos and please do come down to Trump's Bridge Centre at Mossman. The web address there is trumps.net.au. I was going to write it up on the board, but the pen's giving out, so I can't do that. trumps.net.au. It's at 66 Spit Road, Mossman, New South Wales, Australia. And the phone number down there is Sydney 02. Double nine six nine five nine five nine. So that's enough for the corporate plug. Okay, thanks very much for watching and see you in another video. Goodbye.